When you go on dive trips, do you rent scuba gear from a dive center? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make sure that that gear doesn't kill you. You're going to learn today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tonic Dive YouTube channel. My name is Turk. I'm the head instructor here. And today, we're going to talk about ways to make sure your rental gear is not going to kill you. So the few things we want to check on our rental gear before we go diving. One of the first things we want to do is we want to put together our kit, obviously. My low, I'm going to go ahead and put on my low pressure inflator hose here. And the first thing I like to do is check my hoses. The hoses, I'm going to check before we put any pressure in the system. And you see this has hose protectors on it. I hate these. I cut them off all my rigs. I'm going to take the hose protector, I'm going to slide this back. Ooh, we have separation. Now, it is the rubber housing. The braided inside seems to be okay, but I don't know that for sure. I would not personally dog this. This one has tape on it. How good can that be? And then we slide the hose protector back. And same thing. We have rubber that is pulled away and that braided inside is shown. People seem to love these hose protectors. All it really does is keeps you from being able to inspect quickly the most important part of this hose, which is where the hose meets this ferrule right here. So I'm going to check to make sure all my hoses aren't bulging. Uh, see, I've got a cut and they're over here too. Could this be okay? Yeah, it could be fine. It could be just the outside of this rubber housing, uh, but we don't know. And I don't want to find out when I'm down to 30, 35, 40 meters. I want to know beforehand. <clears throat> so hey, swap this out for me. I don't think this is safe. If the dive center says, hey, it's going to be fine, you might want to find another dive center. All my hoses look good. They don't, but we're going to see how the hoses look good, and that's when I'm going to continue on with the rest of my checks. Inflate this right here by pressing the inflate button. Oh, we have a problem already. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. So I'm going to have to dump that out. I want to make sure you can see this. So I'm going to press this button. Notice how it's still inflating. After I let go, that is a stuck inflator button. That is not something we want. Uh, the last thing we want to do is we make our descent. We're getting neutrally buoyant. We want to add a little bit of gas to this. And suddenly we add a ton of gas. As you can see here, this thing is full. So immediately I'm going to tell the dive center, hey, I need a new BCD. This is not going to work for me. I'm just going to go ahead and go on with the checks. So the next thing I do is I'm going to check, does my shoulder dump work? I don't really use this, but it's always good to check all of your dumps. And does my rear dump work, which I'm definitely going to use when I'm neutrally buoyant and in trim. Yep, that works. Now, does the overpressure valve work to make sure we're not going to blow up the bladder in Fatality. Hear that gas leaking from here? That's the OPV. That is working properly. De and now the deflate button. We know that works as well. So just a quick note, the items we're working on today, the BCD and the regs, are not currently in our active rental gear line. These are items that have been pulled out due to these failures, so we can service them and get them back into the rental gear line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my mouthpieces. I'm going to check for two things. In this area of the world, here in Bali, we have rainy season and we have dry season. Rainy season uh, leads to mold growing everywhere. There's not much you can do about it. So we want to make sure that these mouthpieces have been cleaned, that we're not seeing any mold on them. The white mouthpiece is really going to show it. I uh, don't see any mold on them, so that's good. The next thing I want to do is I want to check for any tears in the mouthpiece. I want to make sure that the zip ties on there nice and tight and there's no tears in it. Because if we have a tear, that's going to lead to a wet breath. So looking, and right there's a tear. So here, I don't know if you can see that or not, is a tear in this red. Now this is on our alternate air source. If you go to donate this to an out of gas diver who might be already panicked, and now they get a wet breath, that's going to lead to compounding problems. All right? They are out of gas, they're a little bit panicked, you give them gas, and now they breathe a wet red. They could snatch the rivets in your mouth, they could make their way to the surface quickly, 
Hopefully they don't hold their breath. But regardless, we don't want that to happen. So we're going to go ahead and swap out this mouthpiece. Another way to notice this, maybe you looked and I happen to see the cut. Sometimes it's small and you don't see it unless you stretch the mouthpiece out. Another way to check this um, is something that I teach all my divers. We're going to start by descent, get neutrally buoyant. Once we're neutrally buoyant, everybody's under control. Then we're going to do an escrow. That's my sign A, escrow. And we're going to check. So if I'm in a single tank back mount setup, I'm going to switch from my primary rig. I'm going to go ahead and grab my ultimate air source. I'm going to switch and I'm going to breathe off both of them. So my buddy can see, hey, this is your lifeline and it's working underwater. Um, I did have a rig the other day on my side mount setup where there is inside of here, there's a diaphragm. I had a couple pebbles from the beach here lodged in there. So as you breathe in, wet, exhale it out. Okay, no problem, breathe back in. Nope, still wet. Because instead of sealing here, it was letting water come back in. You would never notice that on land. So we want to make sure that we're checking them on land as well as underwater. And before we start our descent, if we're going to 30 meters, make sure you're checking those sticks. Very important that we check that for us and our buddies. Now, when I breathe off my regs, I'm not just doing this, or I'm also checking to make sure my cylinder's off. So if it's just partially off, works fine, right? Get in the water. Seems to be working fine. Get in the water and it's not going to work. This valve is almost all the way closed. So I am going to take my SPG, put my rag in my mouth, and take three deep breaths. And I can see this needle moving on the SPG. That tells me something's wrong. That tells me my cylinder's not all the way up. Now if the cylinder is off, could I still breathe off this? Yep. Now second breath. Now, now I don't. So some people, We'll turn it on, they'll do that, works fine. Then you get in the water and you realize your cylinder's off. We want to make sure our cylinder's on completely. We want to take three big breaths while watching our SPG. Good, now I'm going to do the next, I'm going to do the exact same thing with my primary air source. Everything's working appropriately. That's good. So we've checked our BCD. Check to see if it inflates, deflates, and all the dumps work. We do know that we have a sticky inflate button. Not good. So we'd have that swapped out. We know we'd have a bad mouthpiece. We would ask the dive center to either A, change out our mouthpiece, or B, just give me a new reg set if we don't have another mouthpiece readily available. That's why here at Conadive we always carry an extra rec set with us just in case we do have a failure that maybe we can't fix at the dive site itself. <clears throat> Most things we can't fix. These are all things that can get you seriously injured underwater. Your dive center should be checking for these, but you, as a thinking diver, need to make sure you're going over your equipment because it is your life on the line. Yes, the dive center has a responsibility to make sure all their gear is in working order, but you have a responsibility to make sure that the gear they give you is in working order and up to the standard you would like. If not, ask for another set. It's not a problem. No dive center should be upset that you don't feel comfortable diving something that maybe looks unsafe. Is it unsafe? We don't know. Again, this rubber, I have no idea if this is unsafe or not. But I don't want to find out when I'm down, so if it looks unsafe, I would rather not take that chance. It's about being risk averse. Don't take chances underwater. It's not worth it. The reef's going to stay there as long as we protect our oceans, the reef's going to be there. The next thing we're going to check is our rental mask. Maybe you didn't bring your own mask. So I picked this one out specifically because I knew it had some mold on it. Again, we are going to be cleaning this. Right after rainy season, it starts to get hotter. The air becomes a little bit drier here, and you really see some mold growth at that point in time. You can look at this mask here, and you will see there are some black spots on it. Some of this is dirt. Some of this inside is not. This is mold that I can't rub off inside here. Do you want mold on your face? I do not want mold on my face. So I'm checking my mask. Hey, is there any mold in here? Ooh, there's some mold in that nose pocket. I don't want that to get up inside my nose. Hey, dive center. Can I have another mask, please? 
this isn't going to work for me. So how do you make sure the dive center you're diving with is giving you good gear? You do proper checks. Check your mask. Is there any mold in there? Nope. Good to go. Put our gear together. Check our hoses. Move these hose protectors. Don't just glance at everything else. Move the hose protectors and actually look. Because this is where they're gonna, you're going to get some bulging. If it's going to fail, they're going to fail here likely. So move the hose protectors. Check all our hoses. Once the hoses are checked, we're going to pressurize the system. We are going to check the inflator button. Does it inflate and not stick? Does the deflate button work? Does our shoulder dump work? Does our rear dump also work? And does the overpressure valve work here? So when you put a bunch of gas in it, you can hear the overpressure valve working properly. Now, I'm still squeezing air out of here like the water would as we go down deeper and deeper. And you can hear the OPV is still working. So that means we've got a bad OPV on here as well. It's not holding gas. So as you're descending, the pressure is increasing around us. So it's pressing on this gas in here. And it's going to keep leaking out. Which means in order to stay interested and buoyant, we've got to add more. If we keep adding more, losing it through the OPV, adding more, losing it through the OPV, all that is doing is giving us shorter dive times. We don't want shorter dive times. We want longer dive times. So again, we want to make sure that we're checking every piece of our equipment. We've checked the hoses. We've checked the PCD. We're going to check our mouthpieces. We're going to check with the regs breathe properly while looking at our SVG to make sure the cylinder is fully open. And if everything's fine, then we go dive. And remember, do your S drill at six meters. Maybe you want to do it at three meters. Whatever you and your buddy decide on, do not do it deeper than 10. Make sure that you're switching your regs, showing, hey, that this one works under the water, putting everything back, making sure everything's streamlined, and then off you go on your dive. I hope this helps you guys dive safer. Stay tuned. We have more videos coming to the Prana Dive YouTube channel. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.